Hey crafty people, Ashley here, and today's episode is all about turning card inspirations into layouts. So I had just completed this card making workshop and I absolutely adored them. Um, this was bringing in all of the new colors of the year and it had this brand new stamp set called Floral Sentiments that you can get using first and second generation stamps, using some of these wood embellishments, and I just loved the colors, the workshop. I thought it was so much fun, but I'm really much more of a scrapbooker than I am a card maker. So I was kind of inspired by this card in particular, and I wanted to turn that into a scrapbook layout. I thought it would be perfect for some of my Ireland photos. So I kind of brought in a bunch of the elements. You can see I am using our two-toned cardstock. So that is going to be, um, I believe that is the say, no, pine. Um, pine on that edge there. And so you can see how you have the darker true color and you have the lighter side on either side. So by simply doing a progression of colors and flipping them over, you get kind of this really fun gradient. Um, I was gutting my paper there. I think that is the new periwinkle color because I only had a couple sheets of this um, and it was going to be a little bit before I could order it. So I cut this just to perfectly fit my four by six in that three by four photo. And then do you see that little white spot in the top? And do you see my card, that embellishment cluster on the card? Well, I am bringing that element from my card into my layout by repeating that exactly as is. So I am using my periwinkle, that is that kind of a lighter bluish purple. Then I have Harbor, which is the darker color, and then I have Sundance in the center. So those are all first generation stamping. And then I'm going to bring in some second generation stamping for those under flowers. And then I'm using Sage for the leaves. Now something to take note is um, the cardstock used here is Seabrook, but the ink is Sage. So a lot of the colors will coordinate with one another or sometimes if you have a darker color, second generation stamping will match your lighter colors. Um, so if you are new to purchasing inks, I would always suggest going with your darker, richer colors because you can use uh, second generation or even third generation stamping to get a lighter color, but you can't double up to get a darker color. Okay. This is probably one of my favorite things about this layout is these adorable, just little flowers. They're super easy to do. Um, I liked that they come in a cluster with two stems and then there is a single stem flower so you can kind of build and create. Um, I decided that I wanted to kind of fill the whole bottom in so you can see me building it in with my second generation and then adding my first generation on top to really create this look. I am busting out one of my favorite thin cuts to do my Blarney Castle um, title. I felt like that green kind of coordinated well and then I felt like my cluster kind of needed a little bit something so I wanted to kind of tie those flowers in. Um, and then the flowers at the bottom of the page, they are also a repeating element from one of the other cards that I showed at the beginning of the workshop. I am building up some more of my cluster just to kind of balance my page out. See how your eyes are now kind of drawn across from that left cluster to the bottom right? And it really kind of makes you look at those photos. So it's all about balance, balancing. Um, I do like to use liquid glue for doing my titles. Another thing with titles is you can actually cut two layers out at once. So you can stack multiple cuts um, to get some thickness and more dimension. Or sometimes what I like to do, uh, not in this layout, but in my other layouts, I will cut two different colors and do a slight offset to create kind of a shadow look with um, thin cuts and that works for uh, generally any alphabet thin cut. Now sometimes when you use liquid glue you get to get a little bit of like curling. Um, so I'll sometimes place my my ink pad or a stamp block as you can see on top of my letters to kind of help 
keep them flat as it's drying, just anything with a little bit of weight. And then the fun part, let's add some embellishments. So I brought in some of uh, some glitter gems that I had laying around. I think these are actually Bluebell, which was a color of a year a couple years ago, um, but it was a similar color to that Periwinkle. And then um, I brought in some wood embellishments and I really just liked the way it worked. Um, so I actually, this is a later date, I decided I wanted to do a right side. I wanted to do a matching one to it. Because um, I don't know about you, I tend to scrapbook in pairs. Again, I am using like the sad remnants of scraps. Oh, that's Bluebell, right? See how it matched those gems? It's pretty similar to that periwinkle color. Um, so see that card? That was my inspiration for the right side. So I wanted to do these like three repeating elements and then you can see I have kind of this like thin strip behind it, right? So you can always pull elements, patterns, um, layouts from cards and turn them into a scrapbooking layout. If you're enjoying these videos and seeing how you can take cards and turn them into scrapbook layouts, don't forget to like, follow, subscribe. And if you place an order, you help support my small business and allow me to make more fun crafty videos like this. So I had those three repeating elements. I liked the card, but I kind of took a variety of elements from all of the cards, my favorite pieces, and I put those onto each square especially because I didn't need a card sentiment in the middle of this one since I already had my large title on the left-hand side. And I wasn't gonna add much journaling to this particular layout because I've already journaled um, pictures from this same event on a different layout I did. So I kind of created what I thought was a visually balanced with colors. So you can see I kind of did a bluer square at the top. I'm currently working on the bluer square at the bottom and then I balanced with a yellow in the center. And then I am repeating a similar element with my photos. So see how I have the three photos, just like I have those three squares with my embellishments. And then I am also going to dovetail that little strip behind those cards. I'm adding a photo mat to balance and bring the colors and kind of help it pop, especially because this has such like a multi shades, right? But that dovetail helps tie in with our other element, which is the giant dovetail uh, in that periwinkle that's all the way across the page. Now it, I need to bring in some of my elements, my repeating elements, and I need to balance out the right side. Um, so you can see I have those small stamped flowers in the bottom. So I'm gonna actually end up bringing that all the way across the bottom of my page so it is balanced. Um, another thing I wanna point out is this is two separate pieces of paper. I just simply tape them together. It is not a very noticeable transition. When you look at the layout, most of that seam is hidden. So if you are short cardstock, don't be afraid to kind of piece it together. You can even make it look intentional and add extra cuts and ink edges to kind of make a fun, more like Frankenstein look. This one, it kind of just hid well. You couldn't even notice. Okay, but you can see me bringing in that um, second generation and first generation stamping to create those fun little flowers. I will say it is definitely um, a process because you have to stamp stems, first flower or the base flower, and then you have to stamp that extra highlight on it. And then I felt like I needed to complete my visual triangle. So I have something in the left. I have something in the kind of that bottom middle. And so I wanted to bring something into the top right cluster. Um, and then that would kind of help balance it out. And I kind of wanted to do something a little bit bigger. Um, I liked some of the larger embellishment clusters on some of the other cards. So it's kind of bringing in those patterns um, and uh, positions that I liked. I had some that I had also stamped and cut out, bringing in my sage leaves. And I really like this set because it has a variety of leaves that are similar going in different directions. It had a variety of flowers and I love that they has like the base, the center, 
um, and then like that extra like accent color on the flower. So it's really an easy way to make some gorgeous flowers. Next is going to be finishing it off with the embellishments. So that is going to bring be bringing in those gems again, some more wooden embellishments. Really liked the color with those. Um, if you enjoyed today's layout, make sure to like, follow, subscribe, and catch all my crafty goodness. And you can also join my Facebook group for live events, giveaways, inspiration, and just a fun place to share all of your work. As always, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed my video and craft on.